Hey guys, so I wanted to get on here real quick because um, I was inspired by a couple people. Let me just say this. We need the body. We need the body as Christians because the body helps to uplift us, encourage us, hold us accountable. Um, we're in this together. So I, I was going to put up like a post but I felt like, nah, I need to do a quick video about this. I want to talk about how good God is. Specifically, though, who he is to me. Who he is to us, if we really think about it. And it may sound kind of weird when I talk about it. But listen to the whole thing because I'm going to explain what I mean and it'll make a lot more sense. The Lord, um, Jesus, gave a lot of parables for people to understand things. I'm not really good at that. But I'm going to talk about who God is to us. Um, and again, it may sound kind of strange. Like some of Jesus' parables at first were like, what? And then... Once you dig deeper into it, it's like, oh, wow, okay, now I know what he's saying. So it's going to be like that. But before I go there, I want to talk about just two people real quickly that just tonight, you know, I was inspired to just go ahead and, you know, first of all, my, my heart was uplifted, my soul was uplifted, you know, my spirit was uplifted. And um, so real quick, I wanted to talk about stay lit. <laughs> this is my girl Adrena Franklin's. Uh, she has a line, clothing line. She has other merchandise like this cup and several other colors, several other display. Um, so stay lit. You know what that means, that we just got to stay on fire for the Lord. Stay burning, stay bright, keep our lamps lit, you know, keep our lights on in this time always. So stay lit. Um, so yeah, check her out. So I was in my closet and you know, I went to my closet just to be with the Lord tonight. And I I see the Lord. I see my father, my creator, as Abba or Abba, Abba, Father, Daddy, Papa. That's how I see him. Abba is a Hebrew word for father. And I see him this way. First of all, those who know me, you know, and those who don't, you're about to know. I did not have my father growing up. I've never met my father. Have no idea who he is. Nobody knows. And that's okay now that I'm an adult and I've learned some things. Um, I don't have any resentment or, or anything like that. But I grew up not knowing the dynamic between a father and a daughter. So in 2000, um, I think it was like March of 2019. I was praying, Father, show me what it's like to have this Abba-daughter relationship with you because I don't know. I don't know how to view you in that way because I only know one thing about fathers. And maybe many of you do. They leave, they abandon you. You know, they're not there. So... <clears throat> That's all I knew. Like, I knew my friends' dads. They weren't really, I mean, to be honest, they weren't the best dads. I had a couple friends that had wonderful dads, and I always admired that. But I didn't have it, so it wasn't like something that I was like, oh, you know, I knew I'd never have it. So, it, you know, it wasn't something that I really thought about too much. Um, but really, it actually... Um, it, I know now that it caused a lot of issues that I had growing up and into adulthood and all of that. And not having a father, um, the, traje the, traje the trajectory of my life was very wayward, um, very lost, wandering, very broken, very hurt, did not know my worth, things like that. So... The father, when I was saved, began to show me these things. And, and, and I came out of a lot of that stuff. But I still did not have the understanding 
or the feeling of a father-daughter relationship. And I asked the Lord, and I diligently sought him, and I went in my closet day and night, and I asked him to show me, and he did. We developed a wonderful relationship, and I actually see God the Father, the creator of the universe, the heavens and the earth, as my father. I really see it significantly. Not, oh, he's everybody's father. He's your father, too. No, he's my father. He's your father, too, but he's my father. Like, he's my dad. Like, we got, we have something. We have a relationship. And so, um, I encourage you to pray that because he so much wants to be that for you. And he wants you to experience that. Um, so, I have not been in my closet and. um I mean, I go in, but not like I was. So I was like, Lord, I'm going to go in my closet. <laughs> so I went in my closet, and I lay in like a kind of a fetal position, you know, like a baby, like a daughter. I was hurting. I was kind of going through some things, and I was laying there, and I just, I had my, my, my just my, just very soft instrumental playing, um, this quiet my little tiny nightlight in there. It's very dim. Just laying there. And um, I just cried out. And I said, Father, I was just like, we need to talk. You know, I need, I need you right now. Right now I need you for various different things that I'm feeling, that I'm going through. Um, challenges, this walk, you know, real stuff. And I need you right now. I need your comfort. I need you to embrace me right now. Hold me and tell me something good, Lord. Tell me something good. And I specifically remember remember saying, remind me just how good you are, Lord. And I know how good God is, okay? Oh my gosh. He has brought me through so much. I have... The evidence, that song called The Evidence, I see the evidence all around me. Something like that. Um, it's all over my life. That's really how it is. I see the evidence all around me. It's all over my life. Favor all over my life. I know how good God is. But sometimes when you're in that really low place, you just need God to just come and remind you give you some sort of experience that just is like, oh, wow, okay, yeah, okay, I'm back, okay, we're good, we're good, I'm okay, God, I got it, uh, or you got it, you know, but sometimes you just need that experience again, you just need that sense that he's there, Sig a significant experience that you'll never forget that's unexplainable, so I'm laying there, and I start saying, you know, Lord, you know, I know who you are. You know, I remember you, but I need a fresh, I need something fresh, you know, remind me, give me something, something powerful, Father. I just want to experience, you know, you right now, just come into this place with me, Lord. And, um, I begin to say, I begin to just go over all the many, many things that he has done in my life. All the many things that I that I give him glory for, the testimony, and before you knew it, <laughs> before you know it, I'm I'm asleep, and I just went to sleep, and and I haven't done that before, like I was I just knocked out in that closet. Well, I woke up, and the music was still playing, um, but what I immediately woke up to was try again and I was like because to be honest with you when I went in there I wanted to quote this scripture before I got into this and I forgot the scripture is Galatians 6 9 it's one of my favorite scriptures I always have it on my tongue I always say the scripture it says do not grow weary in doing good for you will reap a harvest if you don't faint and I look at that scripture for me as no matter what's going on around you no matter what wicked person is being blessed, <laughs> no matter what chaos is happening around you, no matter 
how faithful you are in this walk, yet it seems like you're still unseen or like your day hasn't presented itself or like the enemy is doing everything he can to discourage you, to take you down. And he's trying to take things from you and people. He is using people to attack you. No matter what's going on in your life, no matter how unsure you feel, no matter the pain that this world brings us, it brings us pain. Through people, places, things, it brings us pain. It's, but it's not always bad. Sometimes it's good, but it hurts. Um, and you know, whatever it may be that you're going through, don't stop doing good don't stop listening to the Lord. Don't run away from the Lord. Don't stop your fellowship with the Lord. Don't stop listening to his decrees and his direction, his, his word. Don't start disobeying him and rebelling against him. Continue, persevere, beloved. Persevere and keep running the race. Continue to stay on that, that, that narrow path. Keep going. The Bible says in James 1, it says, Count it all joy, brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, temptations, trials, of attacks of many kinds, for it is the testing of your faith that produces perseverance. Keep going. Endure because it's giving you an enduring faith, a faith that is going to allow you to cause you to go deeper with God into places you would have never went before had you not went through these trials so that you could see God on the other side. Okay, you have to go through. You have to go through. Okay, and when I went in that closet, I was like, Lord, I'm ready to, you know, obviously I'm never giving up on my father, but ready just to not get, you know, I, maybe it's give up. Like <sighs> I give up. I can't, I can't climb over that fence. It's too high. It's too high. And I woke up to try again. I went back to sleep <laughs> for like a few minutes, I guess. And then all of a sudden, what I woke up to was this. The Lord is my way maker. The Lord is my helpmate. He is my provider. He is my leader. He is my father and my mother. He is my brother and my sister. He is my best friend. He is everything that I could ever need or desire. It's all in him. Every good thing comes from God. So every good thing that we have in our life, the source is him. So all those titles I just mentioned to you, my provider, helpmate, leader, he's my teacher, he's my best friend, he's my mother, he's my father, he's my brother, he's my sister. What I mean, remember I told you it's going to kind of sound weird, is that he is all of these things to me in the sense that what those people provide, what those individuals in your life provide for you, your husband, your wife, what those individuals provide for you in their Christ-ordained position and purpose to bless your life, what God created those positions for in his God-ordained purpose to bless your life, he is all of those things. So when you have him, you lack nothing. I lack nothing. I lack nothing. There is nothing that I lack. Say it. I lack nothing. For my God is everything. In him, I am complete. I lack nothing. He is everything. So that is what he gave me. Try again. And I am everything to you. In me, you have no lack. Try again. So I wanted to bless you with that. It blessed me. And I pray 
truly that it blesses you. Get into your prayer, prayer closet with the Lord with an expectation. It says in Luke 1 45, she, and I'm going to put a he on there too, even though it's talking to Mary. She is blessed because she believed in the promises that he told her. So walk with expectation of what I just said, what the Lord revealed, and know that he is everything you need. He is all of these things. He provides all of these things. You have no lack, but only gain. No matter what the trial is, no matter what the circumstance is, um, the promises that he's given us, continue to do good. You'll reap a harvest if you don't faint. Don't faint. Continue on and believe in the promises that he told you. Whatever that is. All right. I love you. See you soon.